I wanted to do a quick video just to ex properly explain DeFi. There's a lot of misconceptions about exactly how DeFi works and you know what, what the relationship is between Ethereum and the tokens and the validators and supply and yield farming and that kind of thing. So basically, here's how it works. So you have DeFi, and then you have the yield farming, and then you've got like a bunch of terms and some unregistered securities and some stuff, and then some people throw in money they're going to lose, and then you have some cake and a fire, and there's DeFi. All right. So I wanted to start today's video off with that uh, tweet here by Crypto Whale. Um, I thought first and foremost it was funny, but also accurate. So... Um, Obviously, some humor in there, but at the end of the day, this DeFi stuff, you really are just pooling money together, throwing money together, a lot of potentially unregistered securities. Um, you know, it's like ICO craze, again, all over. Um, so, you know, you guys do you, but once again, I'm going to talk about it a little more in this video because I just see people with actually some fairly high influence in the crypto space that just won't let this stuff go and they it seems as though they believe it's the future and he didn't really even say anything that ridiculous but you know he's just talking about time to catch some year in finance bitcoin you know because year in finance is worth thirty thousand dollars already um but i just noticed that this uh bitcoin tina jumped in here and said uh year in finance is ponzi shit. who cares uh but of course, he's like, no, it's ownership of future fees. So its value depends on use of the platform. So far, it's paying out thousands of dollars a day. But most people have not taken the time to read up, hence they dismiss it. Oh, true. huh? Um, so it pays out thousands of dollars a day. And, and how does it do that? So every, what everyone does is they, they take their money and they just pull it together, right? And then the expected outcome as a payout but why what what value was provided what service was provided um, you know whenever you're just pulling money together and the end result is somebody gets paid um, but there was no value um, typically that's a, a pyramid or a Ponzi of some sort um, and you know what it really reminds me of is this cash app will game that was a hot thing I don't know if maybe it still is but uh, what, a couple months ago now, I think everyone was talking about this. You know, hey, man, join in. No, no, it's not fake. It's not a scam. Uh, you know, you just pay and then you get paid out. It's crazy, right? And then you tell them, oh, no, it's a, uh, that's a Ponzi. Uh, that's a pyramid. They said, no, it's not a pyramid. It's a circle. It's a wheel. <laughs> What's it matter? It's all the same thing. You're pulling money in together uh, and you have to keep people coming in in order for the payout to happen. Uh, once people stop joining, then the scheme collapses, regardless of what shape it is. All right, so, but if you haven't heard of this cash out wheel game, nine participants form the so-called wheel with one person in the middle and others on the outer ring. Everyone chips in $100, and the whole sum then goes to the central figure. Basically, you invest $100, you'll get $800 from your, fellow, or from your eight fellow wheelers. Hence, your net profit is $700. But... At least 24 people have to join this shady business for you to qualify for the prize. And once these 24 people stop coming in and your network shrinks, um, you're out of there. So then you lose. Sounds a lot like DeFi, huh? You got to keep pumping that thing full of money. And then uh, the end result is high annual yields. Um, but there was no value or anything actually provided. All right. And once again... You know what that sounds a lot like? It sounds like the legendary BitConnect. Um, and if you don't know, BitConnect was an open source cryptocurrency that was connected with the high yield investment program, BitConnect.co. High yield investments. Okay, let's see here. Sounds a lot like uh, this yield, uh, this DeFi Ponzi. All right, so what does it say about BitConnect? BitConnect was released in 2016 with the goal of allowing users to lend the value of BitConnect coin in return for interest payments. Users traded Bitcoin, traded their great Bitcoin they had for BitConnect coin and could lock in the instantaneous value of the coin for a set period of time while earning interest calculated daily. 
The interest payouts were determined by a so-called trading bot. Huh. All right, does that not sound like DeFi? It's the same exact thing. You lend your, your good crypto and you expect an interest payout. Um, none of it's guaranteed. It's just like I've always said, it's experimenting with smart contracts. It shows that they're, they can be used for similar functions. But at the end of the day, if you're pulling your money all together, expecting interest for nothing, um, that's, that's a Ponzi by definition. All right. And if you go over to this urine finance that everyone's so hype about, this YFI, uh, you go to the actual website, it tells you specifically, this project is in beta, use at your own risk. And it says it on all of the tabs here. So, man, be careful with your money. You know, I don't, I don't think that you need to be buying this $30,000 shit coin that the founders literally came out and said has no value. Especially whenever this great distraction is going on. On the other side of the crypto space, Kraken Cryptocurrency Exchange gets a U.S. banking license and plans to be a global bank. So this is a move towards mass adoption for the real crypto projects and platforms and exchanges. Um, you know, I'm sure that they probably have some DeFi projects on their platforms, but, um, you know, I, I could really see a lot of them being unregistered securities. So if these companies are going to be banks, they're going to have to be careful. All right. But yeah, so Kraken's now got the banking license. I'm sure you guys have all heard that. Um, and if you come over to CoinMarketCap and you click exchanges and Kraken should be there at number four at $3.5 billion, 24 hour volume. What is their highest trading pair by volume? 3.3 billion 24 hour volume on the XRP Bitcoin trading pair. All right. Could it be more obvious? That's the XRP Bitcoin trading pair makes up 94% of their volume as well. So not, not yearn in Bitcoin, not yearn in ETH. All right. None of those. Let's see. Do they have any of those DeFi coins in here? Hmm. See if we can find one real quick. All right, you get it. I don't see one sticking out here, jumping out at me. Um, maybe there is one. Let's see. It's compound in here. All right, so there you go. There's compound. Uh, there could be a few other ones in here. Uh, but main main point being there is um you know all these DeFi coins and everything like that they could very well be unregistered securities and the hammer could be coming down sooner than later um so be careful there because you know exchanges like kraken with the banking license and stuff like that they're not going to be able to risk um uh, having garbage like that on their platform so i'm honestly surprised that coinbase has already launched uh yearn we'll see what happens with all that but um you know, no surprise to me that Kraken gets the uh, first nod at the banking license because they have been a little more cautious with their the crypto projects they've added. But all right, that covers that. Um, you know, besides the uh, DeFi being a Ponzi news, uh, Ripple has expanded the partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation via Mojo Loop. Ripple has joined Mojo Loop as a board member and will continue to expand the partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Other board members of the Mojo Loop Foundation include Google, Modusbox, Open Yard Network, Coil, PhonePay, Phone and the Rockefeller Foundation. All right, so I'm sure you guys already saw this, maybe not, but uh, honestly, this same news came out in May, pretty much. Just talking about how Ripple and Google are joining to work together on this Mojo Loop app. So, designed to enable rural populations to access digital payment by mobile phone. But all right, yeah, so this was news yesterday. Seems as though it was pretty much news in May as well. So, um, the only reason I really wanted to mention that is because obviously it's a big deal with, um, you know, like I always say, follow the money. Where are the people with money working? 
where the people with money partnering at and this is exactly this is as close as it gets right bill and melinda gates foundation um but i had mentioned this uh pdf here this 130 page document by the world economic forum came out in august of 2016 i believe um, but they say that uh, they took on over 12 months of research engaging industry leaders and subject matter experts through interviews and multi-stakeholder workshops Basically, they worked with all these experts on building out the future financial infrastructure. And what do you have right in there? Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You got Stellar. You got Ripple. Um, Ripple and Stellar are the two main crypto projects that were interviewed here um, that you can actually buy and hold. Um, you got Augur and Factum in there as well. But... Uh, I think the writing is pretty much on the wall. I, I, this is why I'm saying like people are distracted looking left at this DeFi, essentially a Ponzi. It doesn't matter if it's a circle, a square, a pyramid, a triangle. It's a pool of money expecting uh, interest returns for nothing. And that's by definition a Ponzi. Meanwhile, you got Ripple and Stellar partnering with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, and working with BlackRock and Rockefeller Foundation and Morgan Stanley and Standard Charter and JP Morgan Chase and Deloitte and HSBC and DTCC and Santander and Alliance and Swift and UBS and then the Central Bank, uh, European Central Bank and the United States Federal Reserve and the Bank of England and the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Australian Government Treasury and the University of... Okay, <laughs> you guys get it. Um, the point is... Ripple and Stellar are plugged in here. Um, it's right in front of your face. But yet, um, you know, there's a lot of great distractions that are going to continue to happen out there. All right. So lastly, news came out here with uh, Mr. Yoshi Takakatel. And everyone's been talking about how um, so he's basically going to be appointed to be the new economic advisor of Japan's newly elected prime minister. Uh, that was the news yesterday. Uh, I just wanted to point out to you that um, somewhere down here in the comments, I guess I'm missing it, but Crypto Eddie said she's going to cover this in her video today, and she's actually plugged in over there in Japan. So, um, and she said that this was uh, speculation by the writer and that nothing has been officially confirmed, but that she thinks it will be. Uh, but at, at this point, it's not officially confirmed. So I just wanted to kind of pump the brakes there on the expectations and you know, bring to the surface that it's not actual, just uh, speculation. All right. But that covers the video for today. Um, you know, as always, please like and subscribe, share with your friends and family and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. What is a cashless society? What does it actually mean in a literal or high level sense? Money will become like these relics of a different age and will only be found in places like this. In other words, hard cash will disappear. It will become electronic, transferred by things like these. Then Tracy is in Beijing to show us what a nearly cashless society actually looks like. Ben, good morning. Mobile payment transactions in China reached a cumulative total of 277.4 trillion RMB in 2018, ranking number one in the world, according to the recently released statistical report on internet development in China. As of June 2019, online payment users in the country reached 633 million. The cashless society is now approaching. When's the last time you paid with cash? Well, chances are cash has taken a backseat to the plastic in your wallet and smartphone pay apps. Denver 7's Ryan Luby explains the digital pay revolution and why not everyone is on board. The cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society. The cashless society is now approaching. The cashless. Oh, my God.